early oh yeah 5 30 in the morning we're just now getting up the alarm went off at an hour at 4 30 yeah yep. it just takes me an hour to do get out the door and do my chores and um so don's driving yeah because i mainly because i'm worried this afternoon i'll be well this evening right at 6 or 7 p.m i'll right. be too tired to drive tired. home and stay awake that's right because i got a i missed sleep and i'm it's a full day with the kids yep. so but um so don's gonna drive us to greensboro he's gonna come home yeah be home for like six hours seven yeah. hours and then he's gonna drive back right probably supercharge on the other side and at home today right and i'll, I'll try to think remember to take a little video about my logic because right now I'll, um i'm expecting to be able to go there round trip I'll go there and come back without charging plug in it's sunday so there's it's off peak all day so i can let the charger rip the whole time I'm home, and it may be enough to get us back round trip one more time. I don't know. If not, I will hit a supercharger. Yeah, the Greensboro one is oh, 11 minutes, miles. 11 miles, something like that. Yeah. It's just a little past where we're actually That's going. Right. So if Don feels he needs to supercharge to come home this afternoon, he's going to do that before he picks right. us up. So right. he can be in the area, and I can just message him we're ready now, and he'll just leave the supercharger. Yeah couple of things uh, number one we're taking the long way around instead of our back roads because um, of deer we don't want to take the roads down by the nuclear power plant this morning because uh, nobody else be out there and we're afraid we'll startle the deer we never drive that way in pretty much in the dark uh, she's saying round trip for Don back home now is 16%. It was 23% when we left the house. Um, I think because the route we've taken is longer, uh, when she recalculated now, is longer in miles. Not necessarily in time because it's faster on the interstate. You know, that's going to, some of those back roads are, you know, 55 versus 70. And, um. We're supposed, I need to be there by 7.15. You know, as a coach, I need to be there early. Um, that's when check-in starts. I'm, uh, she's saying 7.06 a.m., so we got plenty of time. Sorry the camera's bouncing around so bad. I'm holding it as <laughs> still as I can. So Don actually decided we're taking Highway 64 across instead of the interstate. And right now, she says return trip 15%. Don's going to get us on 64 off the turnpike here, and then we'll watch the map redraw. Let's see, right now it says it's 72 miles, so by the time we get off it's going to be like 71 miles. It's now down to 71. What I'm trying to say, I think it's like 8 to 10 miles difference. Yeah, it's shorter and it's slower speeds. It's shorter and it's 60 versus 70. It's it's good road all the way. It's it's not it's divided highway 100% of the way. There yeah. are a couple traffic lights on 64. It's not 100% controlled access. It's probably only 25% controlled access, but there isn't very many exits off of it. see what Ruby does here when we get down at the bottom of this ramp. She should recalculate. And Don's driving right now. He's not on autopilot. Yeah. FYI. Ruby's not handling these turns. I don't. Right. Yeah. Alright, so she's already just now recalculated in there so you can show the folks how far. What's it say? I can't it read it. It says 65 miles. So it's shorter. And it says 21% for a round trip. So it gets us 5% more. Or was it five? Uh, yeah, it's like uh, five. It was 16, 15. It's been changing a little bit. We do have the heat on 72. Right. So that was the difference in the miles. And it gets us there at the same time. So we are here at the Corbett Sports Center. 
NC A&T University in Greensboro, North Carolina, home of the Aggies for the um, NC FLL North Carolina State Championship. There were 60 teams yesterday. There are 60 teams today. You'll notice that the table area down here, instead of the uh, three tables we had at the Smithfield High School, Smithfield Summer High, we've got six here at the state competition. Our team is in pit number one, and we are up first this morning for uh, the judging, the uh, presentation, core values, and robot design stuff. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a good day. There's my team at their pit. There are pits all around the upper level of the sports arena, 30 on this side, and another 30 over there on that side. The refs are having their meeting, and the coaches are having our meeting. 8.15, things are moving fast, and we are getting ready to head into the project. So we are able to peek into the judging this time. Um, normally, there's not so much glass and we can't see, but it looks like they're doing what they're supposed to do. Each one talking is stepping forward and fr from the line, and that's goodness. Next up is robot design. Robot design. So they talk about their code and they talk about why they have the one that they built. <laughs> I love that. You're like, Put the little mic. All right, they are in their core values interview. This is the last of the three morning judging sessions, and then they'll be back over to the pit and some practice on the table, and then this afternoon the robot game. So Don got home with 26% battery left, uh, which was more than the original estimate, probably due to us changing the route to lower speeds and 10 less or so miles each direction. At any point, he's plugged in, it says like seven hours and 30 minutes to finish charging at our normal 90%, which he won't be home quite that long, but he will pick up a good amount of charge, more than he needs to get to Greensboro. And like I said, it's sort of convenient for him to go hang out at the supercharger until I tell him, you know, we're 10 minutes away from being ready to leave, which should be by six-ish, we hope. So anything, things are going to plan so far as far as Ruby and charging and the trip and stuff. Um, we're down here having our first practice run of the morning and um, Okay. So far, so good. I think they were, the robot seems to be hitting the missions on this table without a problem. It knocked the swing down and got back to where it was supposed to go. Now it's going to push out the tan blocks. Yeah, Sam needs to do inspection. We hope not. We hope it won't be touching. Sometimes it touches, sometimes it doesn't. But but it is coming back if maybe if you give it some time. I don't know. Yeah. Good. Yeah, 
So we had our first practice run on table A and we'll be down here on table F in about 10 minutes having our second practice run on the competition tables. I haven't actually seen a practice pit table. I'm not sure if there's signups today for that or not. Probably somewhere. Um, the boys are trying to make a slight change to crane. Make it so they can run it more than once and make it so it comes back to the designated spot so they don't get a penalty for picking it up. So I'm home. It's 8.44 a.m. Um, it used 60.2 um, kilowatts. Um, I would say that uh, I'm going to charge and I suspect I will have enough charge uh, that I can... Um, do another trip back we probably I probably will not have to hit this supercharger so I uh, I have it set to 100% I don't expect it to, to reach 100% uh, I'm uh, charging it full 40 amps here and it says it'll be done in 8 hours and 20 minutes um, uh, I'm just gonna let it go um, Eight hours from now is like four o'clock in the afternoon. I'll be I'll be gone by then. So um, uh, I plan to pick Marianne and him, and Johnny up at um, probably no later than six, and it's again a ninety-minute drive over there. And so uh, I will be leaving here probably uh, four. So I mean, it could get close to a hundred percent, but I don't really see see it doing that. Um, Hopefully uh, they're having a good time over there in Greensboro and keep my fingers crossed. Who knows, they may go to National or something. So this team has some serious attachments, including a uh, thing like Douglas tried to build, on the words escape, a forklift type attachment. It, it did some amazing things a minute ago. Maybe if they run it again, I'll catch it, but uh, it's pretty impressive, this robot. Oh wow. Wow, did you see that? It, they stood up the tower. I'm so impressed with them. Now it's gonna balance it. Oh, they tried. Good, great, get great effort. That robot is impressive. It looks like it's turning, eh? No, it's not. Close. Looks like if we send the robot at a little bit of an angle, it has a better chance of dropping the block that's on the crane. I think that's worth like 20 points, so it is kind of important that they uh, get it to run. This has, robot is so cool. It has a white window. Yeah. On the red block. It is a cool, I'm gonna go over to their table later. I mean, I haven't seen anybody else solve that mission. No one. This one here is easy to flip. It's not so easy to balance. They give it a good try though. They're not quite getting high enough on the bridge. Not quite. Maybe they can adjust it before the competition. That is impressive. I'm impressed. My guys are over here playing games after lunch, hanging out. I thought I'd walk around for a minute and stretch my legs and also um, check out what's going on with some of the other teams. There's a lot of great poster board work here, robot design, any ideas I could get for helping us do better next year. We're already talking about next year. I had told the school I would do it one more year while Johnny's still on the Thompson campus there. Before he goes over to the college campus, so um, do you plan to stick with that? 
everything goes according to plan. The problem, sometimes guardrails are more harmful than helpful. The solution, it looks like it rolls with the car if the car runs into it. So this team um, is from Ballantyne and Fuquay and uh, their project has to do with electric buses. It's way cool. Douglas and I are studying the design here. Sometimes the teams use the touch sensor to start the next program. Up and down. Yeah, the up and down is right here, the left to right is over here. Yeah, let me see. It, it has a really nifty tool. I still think it's impressive how how the even when it's a tool, it's thinner. Because you don't have to put the motor in. I like it. Hey Donnie, here's a team after your own heart, the pancake robots. So this is the fun zone activity they had for the kids. Looks like they're having fun. <laughs> you did? Don't hit Johnny though. Show me what you can do. So if the Velcro hits it right, it stays stuck? Is that how it works? I want to try it. I don't have an armband though. Oops. Conveniently came back to you so you can try it again. I really love how this team put their team number into a barcode. Really cool. Shirt. This team is sporting awesome taco hats. All right, the opening ceremonies, think Olympics, is uh, going on right now. And uh, the teams are walking in parade formation. That's Dr. Corey Bennett giving the opening talk. He's the one that everything stops with him or starts with him. He makes it all work. Rats, are we ready? Yes. So keeper, are we ready? Three, two, one, let go! That's exactly what it was supposed to do. They waited till it came back. Unless you see her reach for the referee for a red chip, we did not get a penalty. These boys have been working together. They do a good job. That looks great to me. Where it's supposed to be tan blocks in the tan circle. Now they're gonna try to put the red blocks in the red circle. That looks perfect. Now they're putting blue and white blocks in the right spot and this other extra white building structure has to be in the circle but not touching the other stuff. I think that's a win. And they've got plenty of time, plenty of time to push the lever on the crane. They may rerun it more than once. Yeah, they, they did not drop the crane, but if they pick it up because it didn't come all the way back, they'll get a deduction. So they're choosing not to touch it, even though they have a minute and eight left. They're conferring. I'm gonna let them do whatever they decide. Their choice. One minute. All right, they decided to send it at the chance that they can get it. They're just trying to... Yay. So it ended up being a good choice for them. Good, nice job, boys.
I was waiting for Douglas to have him on the crane again. Yeah. Because I was like, is he going to take the penalty and get the extra 10 for the next one? Well, I'm really proud of how they work together to sort that out. One of the best uh, moments of teamwork that I've seen the entire so, season. Hey, it's done that. It's time for round two. They did um, have a practice table session upstairs and they did make some changes to the code at the very end for how it manipulates the crane. So, um, you know, they're really close to their max points and hopefully they'll score even a few more this time. Three, two, one, go! I think so. one team I know you can't read that I can't read it it's 490 our high score every single time it ended up being 315 which is a super solid consistent score so we're very proud of them but you know the team at 490 or 480 or whatever it is is like oh my goodness that's the wharf rats yeah that's a very experienced team with a very active coach we were kind of early in the round um, so there are, you know, are quite a few rounds, quite a, quite a few runs of the robots going after we finished up. There is a match in session right now. 
I would love to have more video of more runs, but there's so many people down there and families and the team need to be able to get close to their table when it's their turn, so I've stayed out of the way. There's always only two team members at the table, although they can tag in and out. They have to keep their stuff in that wooden area. So when the robot's back in the wooden area, they can take stuff on and off of it. Attachments, we call them. The robot there on the left, the girls with the orange hat, it was moving really slow. Although sometimes we find that when we speed it up, then we're not as reliable on the path that we intend to go. One yeah, minute. I think a recommendation I would have for them would be to speed it up on the way back. Going out, you need, you know, very consistent results, but on the way back, you just need to aim at that back black wall and hit it. One thing I do see that they did a really good job is look at how they um, how tall their blocks are. The taller you were able to stack things, the more points. Oh, it's going to try to go up the bridge. Oh, it didn't quite make it. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, yeah, I mean it's, five, four. If the robot's two, fully supported by the one. bridge, that's a bunch Time's of points up, at the end up, of the match. Stand back. Needs to know, uh, you know, hey, where and tears. By uh, the off-season competition, uh, when the intake mechanism got hit by another robot, it snapped in half, which was cool. Um, so at the competition, we had to put back together a major mechanism of the robot. So, yeah. Technicians, sports. All right, one last time. Three. Don picked up me and Johnny right on time. I got piled into the car and was pretty just mentally and physically exhausted from being up at 4.30 a.m. Yeah. But um, he stopped at the Smithfields in Siler City that's kind of halfway home. Yeah. Wow. And uh, got me a barbecue sandwich. So I um, recuperated just a little bit. But I'm uh, in the zone over here while he drives us back to Fuquay. And uh, we did real good today. We ended up in the middle of the pack, I guess, when all was said and done on the robot run. Um, of course, they were merging the 60 teams from yesterday with the 60 teams from today to decide who was going to go on to the United States and world competition. So it was, you know, going to be really tough today no matter what. But our boys did good. We're real proud of them. And uh, it was great to be included in the state competition this year.